Hey Wiki Hunters, welcome back to the Wiki Hunt Photography YouTube channel. So today I want to go through how I process that magenta sky um, from the photo of Moraine Lake. Um, you might have seen it in my Instagram stories and um, my Instagram post. And some of you were asking for the raw files and how I process the photo. <music> So here I am right now, I jump in in front of the camera, I got my light set up and I am ready to show you how it works. So um, usually, um, yeah, that that day it was just quite unbelievable to kind of see that colors come out. It's, um, I've never really quite seen it, um, that magenta um, pop out that much before. Um, I was there a little bit earlier and we were shooting for a while and it was a nice blue sky. I was expecting some clouds. Unfortunately, the clouds kind of gone by the time we get there. The wind was just like picking it up. Now, um, I wanted to wait for the pastel colors on, on, the, on the sky. Now, I know as the sun usually set on the horizon, you start seeing these pastel colors on um like a great gradient of pastel colors on the sky so um at that time we were finished shooting you know and we were ready to go home and um i told my friend tristan at that time i was like hey let's just wait for a little bit and see what the sky um do to um you know um to the environment so we hang around for a little bit more and yeah like before we realize it like the sky just turned this really really magenta color so when you shoot um, something like this, it is quite tricky because there's a lot of um, backlight, right? Um, the sun set kind of a little bit to the right of my frame. So not exactly in front of me. There is a little bit, um, it helps a little bit that way. Um, however, um, there is still pretty strong backlight. So uh, for that reason, you have a high dynamic range, right? Um, really, really big contrast between the highlights and the dark shadow. So you have to be careful with that. So in this shot, I try to underexpose enough um, so that I could preserve the highlights, but not too much that I will lose the, um, the shadow. Um, you could utilize filters. Um, graduated filters or sunset filters um, um if you want to learn a little bit more about that check out my um my um youtube post on um the different filters um that you that case um that comes with the master kit um from case filters and how the different filters can help you to shoot different things like this so what I did here, I did not have my filter and what I've done was that I just tried to underexpose enough and hopefully I could bring up um, more, um, I could bring up the shadow enough um, to kind of uh, retain the details. Now I'm shooting with uh, Canon 5D Mark IV which is amazing in terms of dynamic range and um, you know bringing, um, even when you bring it up all that shadow. So um, if you have kind of a more entry level, this is going to be a lot harder for you to do with a single shot. So you might need to utilize filters or maybe do digital blending or high dynamic range shot or HDR bracketing. All right, well, let's jump into the photo itself. So here is the photo that I'm post I've posted and you could see how beautiful that is. Um, and you could see how much of brought up uh, from the shadow um, you know it's um it's very difficult to bring this up so what's the raw file look like so let's just jump into here right so this is the raw file and um, you could see right here the CR2 and then I'm just gonna reset that and then you know and that's what it looks like now the difficult thing about shooting like this as I mentioned before is that the highlights become really really washed out now if you kinda like underexpose this you could see a little bit more of the colors now there is not as much colors on this photo compared to the other ones that I've taken a little bit later on the day because um, this is kind of one of the the first one so let's just reset that again and let's go through what um, how I process this so I like to go that just straight up do auto um, 
it it kind of give you a good understanding of um you know what you can get from there and usually i tweak a little bit more from there so there is a little bit um lens vignetting there that i want to get rid of so i go to lens correction um and just gonna fix that up perfect and i don't i like to keep a little bit of vignetting um but not too much all right so now let's go back to basics and first of all that highlights needs to go down a lot more right uh, maybe i'm gonna try to bring the shadow a little bit more and i'm just gonna play around with the whites here so um perfect so just like that you could kind of see the color pop up a little bit more now i think this shot was um a little bit the white balance I should have shot it on a shade um, to be honest but um, let's not mess around with that for now and so if you're looking at this it doesn't quite look like what um, you see here um, you know it's it's very difficult for me to bring it up there now there's a couple of things you can do um, you can start playing around with brushes right and I'm just gonna go crazy here so you save a little bit of time so just by doing that you see how you can retain a lot of the colors but i don't quite like doing that because it's not as smooth and um it's not um especially around the edges and the transition it doesn't look as great so what i usually do um is i would export it to photoshop and use um lumiflow luminosity masking panel and um from there it will allow me a lot more control to um, to um, control the the highlights and the shadow. Let's see if that's just gonna jump into Photoshop when it decides to do so. Oh yeah, there it is. Perfect. So way should have turned this off earlier. Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. So let's just turn this off, and that is the um, ADP Pro um, version three um, panel. Uh, I believe they have been rebranding to um, LumiFlow um, Luminosity Masking Panel. So this is what what it looks like. But what for those of you who never um, come across Luminosity Masking is that um, Luminosity is basically um the shades of gray <laughs> yeah like the 50 shades of gray um within this um this uh, photo itself so from the the brightest which is you know these highlights all the way to darkest and you can select um a certain type of area based on their luminosity and only um edit and affect those part of uh, the photo so let's jump into it um looking at this straight away i want to bring up that um that highlight so right so you look at here and you can see how the white is what um the white is what is affected so if you make any changes in here the only thing that gonna get affected is the white the darker the, uh, the black or um the darker the gray the less it's gonna get affected now you can see around here there is a little bit kind of like dark gray it will get affected but it will not get affected as much so um i'll probably just gonna go on this one to start with and then i'll go on a curve so the first thing i want to do i want to reduce that look at that the colors already start popping out right it's quite nice already perfect and and then i'm gonna play around with the with the mid-tone a little bit see if this helps it's fine look at that the color is already popping up very nice now you could see here if you look at look back compared to um compared to um a lightroom you don't have as much control here you cannot actually control it based on uh luminosity masking as much now if you do um if you do uh, a lo local adjustment, so for example, like this one, local adjustment graduated. Uh, now, there is actually a way to do luminosity masking in here. However, I found that it doesn't work as effective. 
you see how it just uh, this bit it becomes kind of weird so this is why I don't like to do it in Lightroom so let's just jump back in there I mean that is that looks pretty good already um, so um, I'm gonna bring up the darks now a little bit more um, now notice that I go darker and darker because I do not want to affect any of any of the highlights I want it to only affect the darks um, now let's just see um, that's good just gonna bring that contrast back a little bit more perfect I'm just gonna try to bring a little bit You gotta be careful when I when you do this. You have to do it bits by bits and have a little bit of patience. Now that looks really good already. So one of the other things that I really like about this ADP panel is um is that they have this um settings there already. It's it's um kind of preset or not really, but it's um it designed to to um to do a certain thing. Um, so this is a dynamic contrast and I like to use this quite a bit um, instead of playing around uh, manually um, trying to do this yourself um, this kind of like a one-click thing and looks a bit looks a bit strong for me and what I usually like to do is just actually go a little bit softer on that um, now I like to do polarization. Um, let's see if that works or not. It's not bad on this one. Um, I think um, the polarization basically make the blue a little bit deeper and actually, um, yeah, you could see how much deeper that is, right? Um, let's just take that away. And it mostly affects the blue. It, it doesn't usually affect um, a lot of the other stuff. And you could see here how it deepens it and then um, create a, a richer, add a richer blue into it. So if you take that away, you could see how it uh, become less um, less strong and less tense, um, the, the, the color of blue. So I think just like that, it looks quite nice already. Um, I'm quite liking that. Um, what I would probably do, I like to bring up um, maybe a little bit more of that meat tone. Um, let me just see. Maybe and maybe not we'll have to see okay yeah no problem yeah that's actually quite nice um i quite like that so yeah that's um that's pretty close um to what i i, I like um so um i might just bring a little bit more of the highlights um just in case Now, if you were trying, if you were to try to um, pick this luminosity masking area by yourself, um, you could also do that without getting this panel. But it takes forever. Um, I did attempt to do that, and I was just not. Nah, this is um, it takes too long. Um, and then I I look into a different panel, and then this was one of the panel that I quite like. Um, so. I went with this one but there are a few other one there as well now the uh, the good thing about lumiflow panel they um, actually give you a free version it doesn't have as much control as this one but it's really good way to start um, your luminosity masking so just like that it, it looks quite good already now you can see that there is a lot of color bending here um, one of the reason is that I went quite harsh in my edit um, I go to the brightest and I just bring it all the way down now when you do that you will um, have this bending so um, you're gonna have um, you know if you're gonna add this edit this um, for your photo or for prints or for exhibition or um, awards you gonna have to be patient about it and you have to do it bits by bits and make sure that you don't get, get this bending um, but for this um, purpose um, I think it's okay um, now the file here gets really big um, you know it goes from 25 megabyte to um, 860 so what I usually like to do is just merge them all together 
Um, and then the cool thing, you hit the save, um, you could see here saving. Now, once it finished the saves, it actually will take that photo back to your library. So here it is um, back in my Lightroom and you could see, there you go. So this is the one that I posted. It looks like looks like i fixed a little bit more oh looks like i didn't fix the um the lens uh, lens correction or the distortion there that's why this one is a little bit more um neutral but also in here it looks like i brought up a lot of that color um again so um let's bring down the highlight i'm guessing probably a little bit more closer I'm just gonna try to play around with the curve see if I could help it slightly different um, but it's actually pretty close um, I actually don't like that blue but it is a blue hour so you do get a lot of blue um, you could play around with the white balance a little bit so um, that's probably a little bit better um, and you probably could bring it up a bit more and what I like to do usually with a sunset is use um, use vignette um, there you go look at that look at that purple color just popping out so to demonstrate to you um, this is the one that shot a little bit later during the day and this is probably uh, the best color that I had that night um, now looking at here you could see how the purples are there um, obviously you won't see it as vibrant as this because it is the raw files um, it hasn't been applied um, all that changes yet it has not been processed right but that's also the good thing about shooting profile is that if you if you have this as a final product it's very hard for you to take away what you already put in there um, I usually like to relate it back to cooking right so um, if you're cooking uh, a noodle, for example, it, it's better to have um, uh, a noodle that is tasteless and add taste to it, or um, instead of having a noodle that already have taste in it and you try to take that away. For example, if it's too salty, you know, it's like you have to add a lot of water or whatever. You know, it, it doesn't work as much. So, uh, sorry, it doesn't work as well. So, the raw files, I find, um, you know, it's it is a little bit more bland, but it works quite well. So. I'm just gonna de demonstrate to you how I'm just gonna reset that first. Um, how? Um, why is that? Okay, sorry. I'm just gonna demonstrate with you how this one is a lot easier because the color is a lot more prominent, and I actually underexpose it a lot more, so uh, I could recover a lot more of that highlight. So you could already see a lot of that um, um, the colors in there. Now, if you want want to get that colors you will have to underexpose the darker it is the more punchy that color will look but let's um let's process this and see how it looks in um in lightroom and i think i don't need to take this out of lightroom um we'll see so <laughs> look at that i'm just gonna re restart that again um hit the auto again right look how much that color come out already um obviously when you start playing around with the luminosity you could control that uh, highlights a lot more and therefore you get um a lot deeper color but just by doing that it looks so much better already that looks great um probably gonna need to fix that horizon a little bit Now you could see here that I haven't played around with the vibrance. Um, you know, when you click auto, it usually bump it up to 15, um, just automatically. Um, right? You could actually play around with it a little bit more. So you know, like at 60, that's crazy. I'm probably gonna go a little bit less, maybe like 30, 35. Yeah, something like that. And I will do what I did before, where I brought up everything and I'm just gonna put a vignette in there to bring back that color. Boom. Yeah, 
perfect quite like that already um, now I'm just gonna try to get that a little bit more just get that highlights a little bit more punchy by making it darker here but this time I will go to the range mask go luminance and perfect so you could see on this one the luminosity masking actually working quite well um, in here because I don't have to go that extreme when you have to go to very bright to um, very dark it is very hard to use this but because there is um, I only affected a little bit from that um, it actually works quite well now if I click show luminance here you could see this pink reddish area is what um, what it affects um, um, what this gradient um, local adjustment is affecting on the image um, all this one that is white and black it doesn't touches it all at um, now if I take this back you could see how much it affects the rest of the image okay so let's just bring it back beautiful and then this smoothness is basically the transition you see how how in here um, you, you don't have as as smooth of a transition and if you go here uh, it kind of all blend but the problem is like if you go too much on the smooth then it kind of happen to everywhere right because the feather um, the transition is uh, very nice so there is a little bit of balance on that I might try to kind of bring it back a little bit uh, around there well, let's just see the final product perfect that looks quite nice I'm praising my own work <laughs> okay so yeah um you know since I've applied that um that vignette thing in there um, I'm just gonna bring the just gonna bring that vignette a little bit down actually perfect just like that look at that that looks a lot uh, that looks pretty close to what I've done here um, right and this is the one without um, Photoshop now in here you can see how much deeper um, the color is because I was able to control more of the light using the luminosity masking panel so it just goes to show you know that's uh, the two different um, kind of um, way of processing and the two different outcome that you can get now, if you make this a little bit darker you could see how much more um, how much more vibrant and punchy that color is so um, yeah so that's that's the two difference and you know the other one looks a little bit crooked well there you go um, let me know in the comment below eh, what do you think about about this um, what do you think about luminosity masking um, you know if you're interested to give it a go um, but apart from that thank you very much for tuning in and um, you can now see so I'm just gonna oh the computer is thinking um, now you could see here that um, you know the color was like that um, it was it was a, it was an incredible day to be able to see that um, like in person but um, yeah you could see that I didn't add any colors I didn't touch any of the white balance now if you take this to shade it probably gonna come out a little bit better so that is probably a little bit more what looks yeah no it's too magenta I think that is a, a good balance there um I like how that looks um, and if you go back to a shot it's a little bit more blue it's definitely not as blue um, at least from how I remember it so yeah let me know what you think on the comment below and um, if you're watching this uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button just down here and yeah feel free to um, shoot me any question if you have any question well, thank you very much, Wiki Hunters, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.